Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar from Allianz and discovering what a career insurance can offer you. Um, if you could please say hello in the chat function in the bottom right or give me a thumbs up to let us know you can hear and see us all, that'd be great. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, so there will be a dedicated time uh, towards the end for a Q&A session. So if you've got any questions throughout the webinar, uh, please pop them in the questions tab in the bottom right next to the chat tab uh, as it works by popularity upvoting system uh, and they may get missed within the chat. So yeah, without further ado, I'll now hand over to uh, Jules. So enjoy the webinar. Brilliant, thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Jules. I'm the Graduate Talent Manager at Allianz UK. Uh, really pleased to come be hosting this webinar with you all. Um, as you can see, I've got some lovely people who've joined me who are graduates on our current schemes on a variety of different schemes actually. So um, we will be trying to answer as many questions as we can throughout today. Uh, we wanted to run through a few slides um, just to kind of uh, show you a little bit about the insurance industry for those who don't know and are curious. Um, so we'll run through those and bring that to life for you. Uh, we're also quite keen to kind of share with you our own experiences on um, the insurance grad scheme, especially at Allianz. Um, so really welcome any questions as we go through. If you want to put the questions in the chat function, we'll keep an eye on it and um, answer any questions as we go through. Uh, we will introduce everyone individually a little bit after the kind of introduction to insurance. So we just wanted to start uh, today to uh, talk you through uh, Allianz, who they are, uh, a little bit about the insurance industry, how it came to be, um, and then we'll meet uh, our graduates um, and then finish with a QA. and a um, So hopefully, hopefully that's that works for you all. Um, as we go through, I will invite uh, our grads to kind of get involved and actually bring bring these slides to life a bit. Um, so they've all worked in different areas of our business. As you can see on the screen, some of us are at home, uh, some of us are in the various offices around the UK. Um, so we can obviously bring to life, you know, how, how our business um, has many offices across the UK um, and how what the different roles we've all been involved in. So, so Allianz Group, um, just a quick kind of poll, really. Um, has anyone heard of Allianz Group? And just to, just to want to put in the chat function, just to give us an idea or thumbs up to see who's heard of Allianz. And also, if you want to put in the chat function how you've heard of Allianz, we'd be quite interested to see, um, you know, how you've heard the name, where you've seen the name. It'd be quite interesting to see. Some of the team that's worked in the, the brand team might equally be uh, interested. Grads, I don't know if you see any of the answers, if any of the answers come through to see where they've heard the Allianz name. I think there's just lots of thumbs up. Yeah, nothing yet. Nothing yet. Perfect. Okay. Well. So, who are Allianz? So, as one of the clues to where you might have seen the name is kind of in the background to this slide. Um, Alan, Matt, do you want to just go on mute for a second? Got a bit of background noise, I think, from, from the busy Glasgow office. Um, so, um, We'll come to you a bit later. So um, we were founded in 1890 in, in Germany. Um, total revenues, the numbers are always staggering whenever I look, look at them. They always seem much bigger than they should be, but 152.7 billion in total revenues for 2022. Um, and our, our, our 2023 obviously will be next year. Um, around 126 customers worldwide and 155,000 employees worldwide operating in over 70 countries worldwide. So if any of you on the call are from other countries you might actually have seen the Allianz brand sort of in uh, a lot more on the streets um, because in the UK the Allianz brand traditionally and we'll come on to it was a commercial brand um, operating in the commercial sector um, in the last few years we've actually moved into the personal space and we'll get into a little bit of history of how that's worked um, by acquiring um, the LV brand which some of you might be familiar with from the adverts um, we are the world's number one insurance brand worldwide um, and last, and 2022's operating profit was 14.2 billion. So put a bit of perspective who we are. So just a quick quiz, uh, if, if you were able to put in the chat function. So based on that kind of information, where do you think Alliance might rank in the world, number, in companies, number? So looking for a number, where we might rank in the world based on revenue. Don't know if anyone wants to hazard a guess in the, ch guess in the chat function. I don't know if anyone's been brave enough to put any uh, answers in. Fifty. Fifty. Ooh, okay. Any advance in fifty, higher or lower? Twenty-five. 
Not bad. Not a bad shout. So, okay, well, I'll split the difference. So we're actually sort of 38th uh, in the world based on, on revenue. Um, and you can see there's some sort of big names that kind of uh, that might bring it to life. But Tesco, 99, Johnson Johnson, 94, BMW, 54. So hopefully that brings you the perspective kind of where, where Allianz sit in the sort of the uh, branding side of things. So over to our brand. I mean, this is my question where you might have heard from us. Uh, and I might bring Estelle into this a little bit because it's in our brand. Elle, and any bits you want to add on this in terms of how our brand works across Allianz? Yeah, so um, I guess, obviously, we're as Jules has said, we're a global group. So we have um, sort of global sponsorship agreements. Then we also have UK based. So um, global, we've got the Allianz family of arenas. We've got the um, arena in Munich. And then we've also got arenas in um, Sydney and all across the globe. Um, and then sort of UK based, we've got um, a sponsorship with England Rugby, which is probably one of our biggest ones. Um, and I guess sort of something that um, flows through all of the sponsorships is it's quite important for Alliance that we share the same values with the companies that we go for. So England Rugby, we're really supporting of the women's game and that's something we follow from grassroots all the way up to sort of professional. Um, we're also the title sponsor of um, the Alliance Premier 15s, which is the domestic league. Um, so yeah, and then other than that, we've got um, agreements with Formula E. Um, so there's actually a big race happening, the e -Prix in um, July, which is all about um, electric car racing, which obviously fits with, um, I mean, Alliance is a big player in the automotive industry. Um, so you can sort of see from our sponsorships that they do align with our business values um, and sort of our key objectives as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Stel. And the big one for next year, I think you mentioned, is uh, uh, official insurance partner of the Olympics. Um, so, and we sponsored, have done for a number of years, the GB Paralympic team as well. So, uh, yeah, really important that our brand is out there and, and aligns with our key values. So thanks, Estelle. Any, anything from anyone else before I move on? I would say that we also do some sponsorship of more local localised things as well. So our branches are very, as we, we have branches all across the UK, um, as part of that, we kind of do other sponsorships. So it's not just the like, bigger stuff. We do do some smaller stuff locally as well, which is also quite fun to get involved in, um, supporting yeah, local great. communities and stuff. And as Estella's kind of sort of uh, hinted out, they're actually working for our brand team as a placement some of our grads can get involved in, um, and a number of have. And actually, one of our grad, previous grads is out now in Munich managing the Allianz Arena contract uh, as we speak. So uh, really interesting part of the business. Um, so I just wanted to bring to life really our, our personal products. Um, and I think a few of our grads here can bring it to life in terms of their experience of working on our personalized business. So this is um, some of them are traditional, what we've had as part of Alliance Commercial, um, uh, but some of them have come across with, with LV, with the acquisition of LV. Um, so we have Peplan, um, dedicated insurance for, for cats, dogs, and rabbits in, available from Peplan. Um, actually sponsored the super vet if anyone's interested in the tv series super vet that's actually currently sponsored by alliance um, and we also offer personal homes building content car and van insurance through our lv or alliance personal offerings and we also um alliance musical instruments so if you're watching the, the coronation concert uh uh yang yang was was famous uh I think his famous pianist violinist was was performing at that concert and he is actually kind of sponsored by alliance musical instruments um so just a, a little link there to something quite recent um grads on the call any any kind of experiences you want to bring to life a little bit about working on the lv side or personal side of the business those that have and connie you're working in the electrical vehicles part of the business if you're still there yeah just let, can you hear me Yep, can. Yeah, can. Brilliant. Yeah. I'm working with electrics, which um, is on the personal side of the business, as Jules said. And we're sort of an introducer for electric vehicle leases, both business and personal. Um, and we do some other things as well. We work with um, as sort of a smaller business, an offshoot of LV and Allianz. So it's a feels a bit more like a startup. It's all very new and there's lots of very creative ideas and thinking in that area, um, pushing forward sort of electric vehicles and home chargers um, and all that sort of like renewable energy uh, future uh, stuff as well. Brilliant, thanks, Connie. Anyone else want to chip in with, with their experience of working across the personal side of business on the, on the grand scheme? I feel like I'd maybe just add that the same way in commercial, there's very sort of a big 
um, precedent setting values, pet plan is very similar. I'm a month into a placement with them at the moment. Um, and you can really see that it, that whole value piece trickles down. So pet plan was started by um, a woman called Patsy Bloom, who basically had an issue with her Yorkshire Terrier. And so it came from a woman who was having an issue and that sort of created pet plan. Um, and even I know her name. So it just shows the values piece does just carry on. Um, and now we're the number one UK pet insurer. So it just shows the importance, I think. Brilliant. Thanks, Estelle. And how many how many animals have you seen in the office so far? Because I think you can bring your, your pet into pet plan offices. At the moment. Yeah, it's very appealing going into the office. There's at least a dog a day. So it's good. I'd echo what Estelle said. I worked on um, the LV personal side um, on the home and motor side on a claims piece. Um, and going back to that values piece, I think LV is you know Britain's most loved um, personal insurer. Um, and working with those guys in claims, you can see that they really do care about their jobs and it's and it's about kind of putting the customer first which again aligns to that customer piece which as Allianz as a business um looks to do so there's lots of opportunities there as well which is uh, very interesting pretty thanks charlie oops sorry So bringing our commercial products to life a little bit, so I'll invite some of the grads to work in different areas, but uh, I won't go through this slide, I'll just kind of leave it there for you to have a look at to kind of see how all of the, all the commercial products we offer as Alex Commercial. Um, and maybe I'll go up to Scotland, we haven't heard from Scotland branch. Um, do you want to bring that to life in terms of, from a branch perspective, the products you're currently working on as, as graduates up there? <laughs> Too well. Matt Hammond, can you hear us? Uh, we can't hear you. Sorry, we'll try to come back to you later. Anyone else want to bring it to bring it to life a little bit from the experience kind of working in the in the commercial side? I mean, uh, uh, I can. Sorry, you go, Connie. No, I was just going to say, I can't really speak to the commercial side, but I can speak to shared services a bit um, and the time that I spent in ops, which is an area that I'm not sure um, is sort of known about outside of like the insurance, insurance area. So it was something of a step away from like learning insurance. And it was, it was really exciting and fun to get to know a business um, and how a business works uh, rather than the specifics of insurance as well. So there's opportunities for that. Brilliant. Thanks, Connie. Charlie, you were going to bring to life yeah, working in a... I can talk to a few of these products. So our commercial business obviously is for commercial so businesses as opposed to the personal lines, which is kind of myself and you guys that would buy your own kind of insurance. A few of the products here, so commercial motor, we look at Allianz is a massive player in the fleet business, which is so any business which requires um, fleet. So it can vary dramatically from kind of... Uh, brokers that might go out and need their their vehicles and um, to go see clients um, all the way through to potentially food grocers and stuff uh, builders tradesmen we do a lot of work with them so some fleets will vary from our smaller sme uh, kind of policies from about three vehicles plus uh, to we have some policies you know we have and um, that can be thousands of vehicles and millions of pounds worth of premium uh, motor trade product is for example car garages uh so where you get your car fixed or mot they all have to have certain types of insurance um, and also for example a car dealership so they all have to there's a load of vehicles obviously in one space um and they need insurance for that and it's and petrol stations as well so there's a few examples there um and then another one that we're really big in is the engineering construction and power so we do uh, two main services there which is one is the insurance side and the other side is the inspection um, and Allianz as a business has got a massive, massive influence in the um, inspection side of uh, engineering. So they'll go out and do site visits. For example, hospitals need to have their uh, facilities inspected and cranes, that kind of stuff. So that's another product that we offer, um, which, again, market leading in that area as well. So that's just a few of the products that we offer in the commercial space. 
as you're talking about Charlie, I'll move uh, on to that. So it's kind of uh, inspection services. Um, you know, you can see some of the buildings actually across London. It's quite exciting to see um, the actual the, the buildings that are insured for our inspection service team across London. Um, so yeah, really unique part of, of the business what we do. And I guess just to hopefully you're getting a, a sense of the diversity of products that Allianz offer in the UK alone um, without looking at the global global piece. And we'll, we'll dive into a little bit with the grads later in terms of all the different experiences they've had uh, whilst being on the grad scheme and different different roles they are. And just to mind if there are any questions, if you want to know a little bit more, if there's something here, we're going to probably race through these slides a little bit um, to sort of get to the grads and to share their experience of what it's like working within Alliance and, and the grad scheme with insurance. But if there is anything that you thought, oh, I wish I'd learn a little bit more, please do put it in the chat function and we can loop back around at the end when we've got question time. Perfect. Before I speed on, is there anything anyone would like to add before I uh, move move on to uh, how it all fits together for Alliance? Joe, I'm just checking that um, you can hear us up in Scotland here now. Yes, hi there, Scotland. How are you doing? Brilliant. Do you want to give a bit of an overview of, of the Scotland, how it works up in Scotland and the sort of branch yeah. network up there? So in the Scotland branch, we're sort of in a way we're the only office in Scotland. So it can always there's a sort of difficulty in that we are the only branch that functions in Scotland. But you sort of when you join here, you realise the connectivity between all the different branches. So I'm in PNC, um, I'm in Fleet. So since I've joined, you know. Up in PNC, um, I've been involved in projects such as insuring Hampton, the national stadium for Scotland. Um, I, we were we also insure Celtic uh, Stadium, which I call Paradise. Um, well, should have some other people in the office would call it that. There's a dispute there. In case you like the football, um, but yeah, the PNC has been great. Um, never anticipated how closely all the centres work together. We've had quite a few people leave um, in the Glasgow office, but. There's never any problems with getting through to people or getting help from other people. There's always people there to help you, and there's always um, people with proper authority there to give you advice and what you need advice on. So it's been great so far up here in Scotland, but I'll pass over to Amin to cover fleet. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm doing fleet in Scotland. I'm not sure what other people were saying on this slide before about what we do commercially, but uh, I'm doing fleet, so that's the uh, when a company's got all of their vehicles, including their vans and their private cars, and they all need insured under one policy. So uh, that's what I'm working on just now. But it's, it's good it's good to be in Scotland. It's a small branch, but yeah, we feel very connected to the rest of the UK as well. And we also work with the Belfast office as well. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. So just on the screen now, it's, sort of, it's a bit of an overview of how it all fits together. So hopefully it brings together what we've been talking about as under Allianz Holdings in the UK. So Allianz Personal, Allianz Commercial and the brands that fit underneath that. And, and to Connie's point, shared services supporting that um, is where I sit in HR, but also you've got operations, finance, risk audit um, and investments under under all under and its holdings and just to from a graduate perspective um those that come onto the rotational scheme can actually work across all of these business lines and have opportunities to work across them so um a really exciting opportunity to work across a huge business in in many different roles and opportunities and placements and we've got specialist schemes as well that would go into sort of finance audit uh, sorry finance actuarial risk um 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 actuarial pricing um, and underwriting as well, so some specialist schemes as well. Okay, so just kind of spend a little bit of time to sort of uh, a few sort of high level facts of, of the insurance industry for those that are sort of not quite sure the industry, insurance industry in depth, but might sort of uh, obviously know of it from having done their own insurance, but um, as, as an industry to work in, um, you can see some of the figures here. Uh, I'll let you kind of absorb the, some of those um, that you can see obviously from a from an industry perspective, it's a 30, 32 billion pound industry in the UK, um, and 1.6 trillion invested, I think, across that. So, um, yeah, you can probably see the sort of scale of the insurance industry in the UK. So again, you know, every five minutes a new insurance fraud is uncovered and that's 300 a day. And again, fraud is an area where some of our graduates can spend a bit of time. Uh, some of our fraud team are actually can be seen. Uh, if you kind of off the back of this thing, well, actually, I didn't realize how much 
there was the insurance industry. Uh, if you sort of dial into BBC's iPlayer and find uh, claims and shame, you'll find some of our Alliance fraud colleagues talking about kind of some of the fraud they've uncovered um, and the amounts of money they've, they've saved there. Uh, you know, 3.3 million, the value of dishonest claims exposed every day in the UK. It's, it's incredible amounts uh, are there. Um, and 760 application frauds, people lying or not giving full facts when applying for insurance. So huge news number and really interesting if you're kind of interested in fraud investigation and legal disputes a really interesting part of the business anyone that's worked i mean um anita i know you're on the call you've worked quite on the claim side quite a bit and um charlie i know you sort of worked as a crm role anything you bring to life in the kind of claims and fraud space Yeah, I can talk um, from slightly if you like. Unless yeah, you go back. yeah, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I did a, a CRM role, which is kind of claims relationship uh, management kind of role. Um, and yeah, there's it, it's. So I think the the common misconception about insurance fraud is that um, you know Allianz, as we've seen, is a massive billion dollar business, um, and what's a couple of grand if I commit fraud gonna do to them? But it's the fact of the scale then it doesn't really always affect the insurers so much it's kind of a, it affects everyone else all the customers because ultimately fraud is comes into our costings and ultimately we have to budget for that which means the premiums will go up um so to, so if you as fraud gets bigger it kind of just has a negative effect on all of our customers which is why we have to take it so seriously um to kind of protect people who aren't committing fraud um from kind of those kind of increases um, and particularly, it's, it's, in, it's an interesting area to work in because it's, it's very cyclical as well. So, for example, when Christmas is approaching, uh, you tend to see a lot of things getting broken, um, which is basically we, we we tend to see that, that it's fraud and people are just trying to get new stuff before Christmas, or they want ca and they want cash settlements so they can they might need some more money to buy Christmas presents or whatever. Um, but we're, 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 it's, it's an interesting space now because they're developing a lot of artificial intelligence, which is starting to root out a lot more fraud um, by picking up on the way people speak um, all the way through to just kind of pinpointing locations where we're seeing more fraud than others. Um, but yeah, fraud, fraud is an interesting topic because it can vary from very small amounts, for example, a TV, a few hundred quid to, we had an example the other day where we had someone suggest that they had Bit, they'd lost their Rolex, their Louis Vuitton suitcase, which had four Prada bags in it or something like that. And it was, the fraud was going to come to about 50 grand. And that that's the kind of fraud that is really serious and needs to be rooted out. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's an interesting piece, really. Do I have a Yeah, I do. Sorry, I was just struggling with the mute button. But yeah, I worked in claims for probably... Um, over a year now and looking at the topic of fraud was really interesting because when I found out that, you know you can get a fraudulent claim every five minutes that's insane but actually as you start reviewing claims you can see how it happens because sometimes people are a little bit dishonest about maybe the things that are in the car that might have gotten stolen or yeah you just see the level of dishonesty that can happen and I guess for me working in fraud I also saw the litigation process of when Allianz has to start legal proceedings and actually how difficult it is to prove fraud because you have to prove that somebody's been dishonest and proving dishonesty is quite hard because it is a little bit like he said she said and also just finding out about the classic um claims that can happen in when I was working a third party motor claims where people could hit into somebody's car and actually like plan the accident so yeah so learning about all that stuff has been interesting but just keep an eye out for people who are being fraudulent um I'll pass back to you Jules Brilliant. Thank you, guys. And just a bit of a history lesson, but I won't spend too long. So I'm conscious I want to get to the grads and talk about their own experiences. But this just kind of shows uh, the history uh, behind the insurance industry. Um, so actually, far back is uh, 1750 BC, uh, right up to sort of present day. Um, so really interesting history in terms of how insurance came about, sort of, um, sort of mainly about sort of big shipping losses um, and things like that. Um, and actually sort of old mutuals as well, sort of where people would collect money together to sort of pay for people's funeries and things like that. So first forms of insurance recorded were actually in Babylon and Chinese traders. 
um, so li to limit the loss of goods. So actually, it's sort of derived from really, really far back, um, and and other areas of this kind of gone where people actually will collect together, collect their pennies together to kind of be able to afford people's future funerals and things like that, which is what often sometimes known as mutuals, which is actually what LV. Uh, origins were where people would actually in Liverpool uh, would collate together to to make sure that people could actually have a, a funeral for, from very poor backgrounds might not be able to afford it but they found actually they collab together they could actually um, help each other out as they went through so some really interesting history around how the insurance industries come about and how it is today to, um, what it is today so Probably won't spend too long on this slide actually, but it's because uh, I want to get to speak to the grads a little bit. But just just have a look at that slide while I'm talking, just to kind of give an idea of the insurance process, how complicated it is, and all the different parts. That, and we've mentioned this sort of in terms of actuarial and finance and how it all fits together, and all how all our graduates kind of work in the big cycle um, and the insurance process that sort of Alliance worked work in. So very much linking with the broker underwriter speaking custom all about the customer um, and then sort of working with with insurance contracts credit control and I think what's quite interesting with this when you sort of look at this there's so many different areas of insurance you can get involved in hopefully this comes out sort of from the grads themselves that no matter what you're studying now or, or plan to study um, I think within insurance companies especially the sort of size of Alliance there'll always be sort of a role that, that will really interest you and get you get you excited about because um, there is roles for every sort of skill um, that, that people have or any sort of strength as well as actually sort of technical expertise that you've, you've gathered through your, through your degrees um, and happy to talk about that and there's also probably lots of transferable degree um, skills you've got from the degrees you've studied into many facets of the insurance industry and also within Allianz in the UK. So just just a quick slide, just to kind of sort of say where Alliance's own history has come come from, where we where we started. So we were founded in 1890, as I said, within Alliance. Um, we actually started on insurance in 1905, and you sort of flow along there. Um, you can see that actually Alliance bought Cornhill in the UK in 1986. Um, and then sort of you can see some big milestones there 2017 is when we 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 bought uh, LV so I'm not sure mean that or someone's quite keen to uh, move along to meet the graduates so <laughs> I'll move across to meet the graduates um, so thought we'd just quickly kind of run through who we are on this call um, so that you can sort of dive in and ask any questions of us all but we'll also spend a bit of time just sort of talking through what roles we've had within Alliance and our own experience of kind of joining the, the insurance industry. So grants feel free to be open about sort of what your knowledge of Alliance was and insurance was pre-joining. Um, to So myself, just to bring who I am, sort of only be fair to kind of share who I am. So uh, my name is Jules. Um, I'm the graduate talent manager in the UK. I've probably got 15 years experience working in the in the early careers space. Um, so very happy to talk about how to apply applications, that sort of thing. Happy to sort of uh, add any insight I can from that point of view. Um, a big rugby fan uh, and trying to force my, my daughter to be a rugby fan as well. And I think that was the only time she smiled throughout the entire game. Um, well, work in progress, I would say. So moving on, Anit, you're first up. Um, hi everyone, so my name is Anit. I completed my my law degree at Nottingham Trent University back in 2020. Um, currently in Allianz Holdings Paralegal and I've been in this role for probably about three months now, but this, this is like where I've always wanted to be. I've always wanted to do like legal um, matters at the moment. I work on variation agreements, novations, NDAs, reviewing contracts, um, the litigation processes. Um, so at the moment, I really just love my role. My past experience has been very much Allianz heavy. So I started off uh, my professional career as a claims placement student. So I worked with Allianz for a year and managed to complete my law degree with Allianz. And then I went on to do an IT internship, which when I was offered it, I was a bit like, oh, I don't really have an IT background, but actually doing it, it was absolutely amazing. 
and it gave me so much skills so I think sometimes when you don't when you aren't too like familiar with the topic just go for it anyway because you might just learn some skills that you didn't have before and then I went to work with LV so this is our personal lines of the business and I done third party motor claims so looking at systems thinking um, and a bit of consulting reviewing claims seeing what we could do better to make our claims handling process better um, and then I went on to be um, an executive assistant in the CEO department in Allianz so that role was pretty much about learning about management. So managing, um, it was, it's a bit of a strange role because I am still young in my career, but you do essentially have to learn how to manage senior stakeholders in order to get things done for your um, respective CEO. So I was his column. So yeah, that, I love that role. That was amazing. And I went to school at City of Norwich School in Norwich. And yeah, my prior knowledge about the insurance industry was next to nothing. I remember going to the interview and I literally... I should have done a bit more prep, but I had like extenuating circumstances, but I woke up at like 6 a.m. trying to research automation and how to automate vehicles, but I really wanted the job. And I think you'll find that a lot of people kind of fall into insurance and I was probably like one of those people. And actually in my interview process, although my knowledge wasn't amazing, I did do enough research to show that I was dedicated to the role, but you don't have to be like the finished finished I don't know <laughs> what word I'm looking for but you don't have to be the package the finished package you just have to show that you've got a dedication to want to work to want to excel and yeah um pass on to I think Jasper Jasper. hi <clears throat> I'm Jasper um I started last September so about 10 months ago um I came straight out of Newcastle University um, with a degree in politics, so not very related to what I do now. But um, I'm on my first placement at LV on the home underwriting side, so on the personal on the personal line side, not on the uh, commercial side of the business. Um, and it's been a really, really good experience. Um, as we were mention mentioning earlier, there's so much different kind of there's so much exposure you can get in the insurance industry, even if you're not, you know, say you're not particularly interested in underwriting, you can go into claims or the engineering and inspection services. Um, so there's lots of different scope for you um, to learn and develop your skills. Um, and one of the good things I think is that you don't need necessarily a skill set out of university or school. Um, it's very flexible. You know, like I said, I have a degree in politics, which you, which isn't kind of very massy or anything at all, but you know you can take that. And as long as, like Anita said, if you're dedicated and you're kind of hardworking, um, I think you'll be able to kind of find your place in the insurance industry really easily. Um, and I think there is definitely something for everyone out there. Um, so, and that's what I certainly found. Like I kind of fell into the job, um, and haven't really looked back since. I've been enjoying it, and hopefully. Um, come September, get some exposure in the commercial side, just to kind of broaden my range of knowledge and kind of understanding of the industry as a whole. Um, and yeah, and that's kind of what, what, what appealed to this to me about this kind of rotational scheme where you can get the exposure to lots of different areas of the business. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's a, a bit about me and kind of what I think about the insurance industry. Um, and I will pass over to Estelle. Um, yes, I'm Estelle. Um, I studied English and philosophy at the University of Nottingham. Um, I feel like when I was at uni and when I came out of university, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I sort of picked a degree on purpose that sort of kept my options open and then hated myself for that decision when I got towards the end because I had no idea. Um, and then when I was sort of looking around at what jobs are out there, I was very passionate about having something that didn't, again, pigeonhole um, me and just sort of kept... Um, my options open. Alliance obviously offered a rotational scheme where you could go and try lots of different things um, and so that was really appealing for me. Um, one of the things I'd always said is that I wanted something that was in front of people or just 
had people at the heart of it and I feel like internally we're a very employee centric company and externally um, we're very customer centric so no matter whether you're sort of customer facing um, or not um, those goals and, and sort of needs were met for me um, at Allianz. Um, my first placement was technical home and writing on the LV personal side um, and that was sort of a great gateway into a professional role. Um, it was quite a small team of only six people but that was sort of quite nice. It was coming out of the pandemic so it sort of eased me into that sort of corporate lifestyle um, and then after that I decided I wanted something a bit different so I went into sponsorship. So as mentioned before that was things like the rugby, the Olympics, um, it was sort of stakeholder management with um, the account managers from the rugby and the Olympics as I've just said um, and it was a really good, good opportunity um, again that values piece that I mentioned earlier just seeing the different side to the business um, I think you see a lot of people going to these hospitality events and you don't always get to see what goes into it from the behind the scenes sort of aspect so that was um, a really good opportunity um, and then I decided that that brand area was something that I wanted to stay into so then I've gone to the pet plan side and now I'm doing advertising um, which is just giving me a different sort of business to um, customer perspective as opposed to sort of um, business to business with brokers. Um, so, yeah, I guess the one thing I would say is no matter what degree you're doing, there's some sort of career for you in insurance. Um, I've said here there's lots of transferable skills. So if you write anything, which probably at uni you do, if you analyse anything, which probably at uni you do, those skills will be able to be transferred to the insurance industry. Um, yeah, that's me, I think. Thanks, Estelle. Uh, moving on to Scotland, if that's okay again. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Amin, and I'm in the Glasgow office, like Joel said. So I studied economics at Glasgow Uni as well, and I'm currently a commercial fleet underwriter. Um, I had a little bit of work experience. It was kind of an insurance uh, that was with Virgin Money, and then I uh, did a summer internship and I went to school in Glasgow as well. Um, I would say for understanding insurance, um, so I studied economics and I think I understand better now how kind of important insurance is in the economy um, because it allows businesses to take risks and kind of it's like that safety net for businesses to invest more. So I think it's really important for the economy to allow an economy to grow for example, so that's something that I, I learned. Um, and just kind of to emphasize what some people have said already, you don't have to have worked in insurance before joining a company like Allianz or even know much about insurance. Uh, I didn't really know a great deal um, when I first started, but it's a, a steep learning curve. Uh, I'm learning lots, so it's enjoyable. And Matthew is next. Yep, straight on to me. Um, I'm Matthew, also in Glasgow. Um, I had the same degree as Amin, um, a bit more specialised just because it has financial at the start, which doesn't really mean a whole lot. But um, I went to Dundee Uni, which is a city just above Edinburgh, just north of Edinburgh. Um, I actually didn't know what I wanted to do when I was in the last year of uni. Um, I was Like other people, I started a degree that I thought I would enjoy without actually thinking of the end consequences of what I wanted to do. So a boy who I stayed with at uni called Josh Hardman, I'm sure a lot of people know who he is, um, he done an internship over the summer at Allianz. So he came back from that and told me about a rotational scheme where you don't have to specialise in one department, you can sort of rotate around different departments. And as someone at the time who didn't really know what he wanted to do or know where I wanted to end up, a scheme where I could sort of fluctuate around different departments was something that really interested me and piqued my interest. So... Um, I never really thought a graduate job was for me to start with, just because I couldn't really imagine myself at that time, you know, suited and booted, going to an office, working nine to five and going home. But just the thought of at least having the sort of fluidity in a way to experience different departments within a company, it was just a sort of win-win situation. You know, if I didn't enjoy anything, at least at the end of it, I knew I wouldn't enjoy it. So, you know, I went through it, I did the interview, and I got off the job, and I'm now a PNC underwriter in Glasgow, um, and it's been great. Everyone in the Glasgow office was brilliant. Um, it was sort of a bit intimidating at the start. I think you think when you get a graduate job, you're going to walk into an office where it's just suits and corporate people, you know, talking down to you sort of thing. But it was the complete opposite. When I came to Glasgow, everyone was so nice. Um, the on-the-job training was brilliant. People in the office could never, you know, I was I was being told to ask questions, which was just 
something I never, I never would imagine would happen. You know, I've been actually told to ask questions instead of just annoying people all the time, like you usually do asking questions. People were actually telling me to do this. So it was, it was actually really good. Um, my experience, um, I've worked a few jobs just to support myself throughout uni. Um, when I was at school, I worked in a care home. Um, so just, you know, casual part-time job. It was like four hours a week. Um, I was a waiter for a couple of years after that. And then just before I started this job for four years, I was a 999 call handler. So sort of, I was used to the uh, pressurizing situations in a way, just because um, obviously not as complex as this job, just answering a phone, but the situations you were in and the circumstances that would come up were a lot, were uh, obviously quite stressful in a way and quite um, pressure, pressurizing. I don't know if that's the word, pressurizing. Um, but it, it sort of laid the foundations to start a job like this because you sort of have that experience of, you know, I can handle a lot of work at once and, um, you know, join Allianz as a corporate company. So you do have a lot of responsibilities from the moment you step in the door, which is something that, you know, I don't take lightly and that's something I really enjoyed. Um, knowing that people have invested time into you, expecting you to do a good job, it does, um, it's really good for um, basically satisfaction to know you've got that responsibility. Um, outside of work, I was in the football society when I was at university and I was also in the debating society. I was only in a debating society because my mum told me that I was arguing with people too much and that I could never just finish an argument by accepting someone's point. So I thought I'd just put that to good use for at least a year towards the end of my degree. Um, but life at Allianz has been great. Um, I've recently secured a new role within the data claims department. Um, so it was interesting listening to my colleagues talk about the sort of fraud unit because that's definitely something I want to get involved with. But um, I would urge anyone to apply to Allianz and definitely go for the rotational scheme as well if that's something that interests you and especially if I feel like a lot of graduates you don't know what you want to do when you do university you're just in the mindset of I enjoy this degree I enjoy the work or even if you don't you're at university to, you know have a good time but at the end of it you know you're you're gonna have to get a job at some point so Allianz one of the only companies in the UK I think that offers a rotational scheme so taking that opportunity and just seeing seeing what you like around different departments is definitely one of these opportunities that um, a lot of companies don't offer and it's really good to understand what you want to do and to set the foundations for the rest of your life to understand what you're good at and what you enjoy so i think i'm the last one so i don't think we passed on to anyone but oh sorry connie apologies that's my bad it's fine don't worry about it Sorry, no, it's fine. I think it was me moving the thing earlier, Jules. So apologies for that. I was trying. I didn't realise it was moving for everybody. <laughs> um, I think the hint. I think the hint. Um, I'll try and keep my hands to myself next time. But um, yeah, so I graduated. Oh, I'm Connie. I graduated university literally two years ago, around this time. So it's very weird that this has come up now. But I graduated from Queen Mary University of London. Um, with a degree in human geography, which is something I studied at A-level. Obviously, everyone studies at GCSE, and it's a subject that I really liked throughout. Um, and it was only till I actually joined Allianz that I realised um, geography is definitely a great degree to go to if you want to do anything in insurance. It seems like a lot of people have a geography degree, but obviously you don't you don't need one to do insurance. Um, and my story really coming into Allianz was that I walked into the careers office and I was like picking up loads of books and one of them said insurance. And I was like, right, well, I guess that's me then. Um, and a few months later, I was applying to the internships, which I unfortunately wasn't able to go through with because of COVID. So that was definitely a real challenge at the time was applying during COVID. I'm sure that um, you everyone on the call has has probably had that affect their studies at least at one point um and it was until I think around the third year of my degree that I found out about the rotational role and it was because I just picked up the phone to Jules and asked um, if I still could work for Allianz because it was a company that really like had the same values as I did it's it felt like it felt like a company that was really put like their people first like Estelle sort of mentioned before the value piece um and in their sort of the way that they really value their employees and also their customers um, which was really exciting. Before that, I did do some sort of like jobs, um, sort of, you know, just to keep myself afloat in in sixth form. Um, and I worked at a shoe shop like Kurt Geiger for like four hours a week on a Saturday. And even though that has absolutely no sort of relationship to insurance whatsoever, just having that experience with talking to people, being able to sell stuff, um, just working uh, anywhere really, really helped me coming into a 
into a business environment as well. I did do some um, teaching as well, which helped with the speaking element. Not that I need any help speaking. I think I do that quite a bit anyway. But um, that was that was quite a, a good um, way of like understanding the way to talk to people and and teach them about things as well. Um, but again, you don't really need much in, much like relationship with insurance if you if you've not got any before um when i started i was in lv broken motor which was really exciting i stayed there for a year um and that's a little bit different to the brokers that you might be thinking of within insurance essentially lv broker sells insurance as a package in instead of um going through uh, sort of like one-to-one -one clients which you might find in personal i'm not sure if that explanation makes a huge amount of sense but hopefully at one point if you do join it will um, and then I went to Enterprise Portfolio Management Office in Shared Services, which again was super exciting. And I got to find out loads about the business and you get to see literally every single project that's happening in the business. And if you're nosy, it's definitely a good one to get into because you get to have a route around everybody's resources and what they're doing, and how much they're spending as well. Um, and now I'm in electrics, which is like I spoke about before, the electric vehicle um, introducer for CBVC, which is sells electric vehicle leases um, and then they sort of work alongside flow which is an offshoot of lv personal as well which sells um electric vehicle insurance so that's sort of a bit about me and i'm not sure who i'm passing to next i think maybe charlie yeah hi guys uh, i'm charlie um <clears throat> i joined uh, straight out of uni as well about uh, 18 months ago roughly now had a variety of roles both in personal and commercial now um as you see i was big into my rugby back back in the day um went to exeter i did politics but like most of the other guys here nothing to do with insurance really um and then i got my first placement which was oh yeah, sorry exeter whilst there i did a few jobs working at sainsbury's jockey club and beaverbrook which is a country club i think there's something point about out about that and i think Allianz are very keen to kind of emphasize this is that when you're coming to a grad scheme there is absolutely zero expectation for you to have any kind of you know experience in a big bank or in another insurer because everyone appreciates that um you know you're coming out of school and uni so you're obviously not going to have had time to have done that so but i think there is real value in the jobs that you can get outside of work i think quite a few of us have done that and i think the skills that you develop there are very transferable into insurance because fundamentally insurance is a very personal business uh, we work with brokers closely both on personal and commercial side so it is important that you can get along with people um and yeah, develop relationships with people. Um, so then I did my first rotation in commercial fleet underwriting, which was good in Maidstone. Uh, then I went to LV where I did the claims role, which I mentioned before. Um, and now I'm currently based in London and Guildford uh, in a BDM role, which is our distribution, uh, looking to find, basically support our business developers and underwriters, uh, develop relationships with brokers through providing them with solid MI. Um, I'm conscious of time, but just a few tips, I would say, um, be inquisitive, ask lots of questions. I'm sure everyone on this call would be willing for, I don't know, we can't see you, but if anyone is still there listening to us, do reach out and ask us any questions because, you know, I'm sure most of us are happy to answer them. Um, and yeah, definitely have a good, have, just, just be inquisitive and speak to people here because, you know, there's lots to, there's so much that we'll help with. So yeah, good luck, um, regardless of what channel you go down. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Um, well, we will open the floor for questions. Hopefully there is a few of you left, um, uh, as Charlie said. So, um, yeah, if there are any questions, please do feel free to put in the chat function. We'll come to them. Um, you obviously can reach out to us directly, but yeah, happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, so, yeah, we'll probably start sharing the slides now so that we can answer any questions that come through. Any questions coming through from anyone? Can anyone see you? We have got someone typing. Ah. So. Jules, they said, what is the assessment process for the graduate role like? 
yeah okay um yeah we try and keep it as simple as possible um we're not sort of big into kind of really intense shining a light in your in your face um so it tends to be a fairly straightforward application form for our application system um which is success factors and that's that's what we use for all of our global roles actually um so we tend to just ask very simple question why alliance why insurance and why the role that you've applied for um what i would say is make sure you do your research um you know i'm i'm not that upset if people spell things wrong i've even had a few other insurance company names throw in there which i'm not, I'm not even i'm not too too don't mind that either because it shows a commitment to insurance but what i do mind is where people haven't maybe researched our company um and sort of pulled out some sort of key things that go on in the industry at the moment so do the research that'd be good and then it flows into an interview which is our we use an online um video interview um that is a we pre-record questions and our grads who you see in front of us ask questions and then you record yours uh, back at the grads. Again, very happy to have people retake those if you feel like actually it goes well. Uh, very happy when people reach out because we really want people throughout the process to, to uh, bring their best answers, not the first one they think of when they're on that, that, that process. Um, and then after the back of that, we would bring people in for an assessment centre again um very much focusing on people's strengths um, and not focusing on anything too technical it's more about the individual and what their motivations are for working for us for our company hopefully that helps i would just add as well to that um that the assessment process when i initially joined I thought it was going to be super daunting and it was going to be like me in a huge room with like three stern looking businessmen at the other side of the table and I absolutely promise you it's nothing like that it's very relaxed there's space to make mistakes and learn and get things wrong even at the process of assessment um, and you know you really I think it's just about coming with the right attitude and and wanting to learn and being dedicated like you said to insurance as well and from there you can just you know sort of find the fit and it's also about you um making sure that the company is is right for you rather than just the company is how am I sorry? making sure that the company is right for you as well as the other way around as well so there's a two-way stream to it just to follow up on what Connie was saying there um I fully agree I remember doing the assessments at the start and obviously there they're really the easy bit in terms of the actual assessment because you do the assessments and you think it's gone great and then you get an invite to an interview and then the assessment center and it does seem really like daunting before you do it um but once you actually join the assessment center and they get you talking you know like i think i was like 10 minutes into an interview with someone before i even realized it was an interview because we we're just sort of like talking back and forward just asking me questions about you know so what have you done before this what, what are you doing at uni what, have you got any part-time jobs inside stuff like that and i thought i was just talking and i thought this is actually an interview so it is really like they do relax you it's not stressful at all it was much better than anticipated and um, so in terms of the assessment center i would say that there's nothing really to worry about you know just obviously be yourself and obviously as joe said prepare you do have to prepare and actually you know have some prior knowledge before it but if you know what you're talking about and you can just be yourself then it's no stress at all and I guess one thing to kind of add, which is quite key, um, and I'm sure other companies are like this as well, uh, we're super flexible if there's any adjustments we need to make throughout the process to speak up. I think um, most of our process can be changed and adaptable to individuals' needs. So I would always say just kind of speak up and make sure that we're aware, um, either in the application form um, or like, like Connie said, reach out to me if you've applied and um, you're worried about a certain stage, then just pick up the phone or, or drop me an email. I'm very happy to sort of talk through what adjustments we might be able to make um, throughout the process. You know, we don't want our process to hinder anyone to applying or make people deselect themselves from applying. So uh, please do reach out. You know, and I and I'd give that advice to most people applying to any roles and any schemes now. Make sure that you you do sort of reach out if there's any adjustments that need to be made. Uh, it's key that you bring your best self to the interview um and that's all we can we can ask jules, have another question jules sorry the rotational graduate scheme still open for applications i can't ask that um so not for this year um but we open in september for for our 2024 intake um what i would say and i'm not sure if it applies to anyone on the call here 
And there are opportunities to apply for other roles within Allianz in the meantime, um, and then move, apply to the application. We have had uh, people within the business apply to our graduate scheme once they've started. So there's nothing to stop you having a look at our website for current roles that are available. And it might be you join one of our underwriting branches, the trainee, build up exposure and experience, and then move across the rotational scheme next September. Or I'm sure many of the grads are probably uh, hate me for saying this but use the opportunity to go traveling uh, which some of the crowds here probably didn't get a chance to because of covid but you know you know and then make your application I and mean, a lot of the applications now are, are uh, virtual so actually it does mean that actually you can go away and actually partake in interviews um uh, anita actually had to do one interview with us uh, from a cupboard in san francisco so it can be done um so yeah i mean a lot of companies i, I would say over 50% of companies now, it's kind of virtual. I mean, always check to see what the process is before you sort of go off to Australia or wherever it might be that you, you don't have to fly back for any interview processes. But uh, you might find actually you can be much more flexible with the application window um, and your travels. Um, but yeah, so September the 1st, we should open for all applications, all our schemes um, to have a September 2024 intake. But uh, Charlie, sorry, you were going to say something or... Uh, so good, Jules. Okay. Connie, there might be one for you here, I think. What was the question? Curious about what the new the energy, Curious about the new energy vehicle insurance. Is there any difference between general car insurance? I guess it's talking about uh, Yeah, that's a really good question, I think. Yeah, definitely. There are there are quite a few differences between um, sort of standard car insurance or usual car insurance that you might get and electric vehicle car insurance. So if you think about an electric vehicle, well, first of all, all cars are different. So they have to be priced different. There's going to be different you know, speeds that they go at, different sort of, sort of drivers that might be uh, driving them. So there's a loads of things that make up the price of insurance. But electric vehicles are its own subset, but normally because they have different capabilities, which standard cars might not have. So things like home chargers and charging leads that plug into electric vehicles often come apart as a package in electric vehicle insurance as well. There's also different risks that come in as involved in electric vehicles that standard cars just don't have. So um, people that aren't sort of on the on the edge or on the fence about electric vehicles are also like, they're so much more dangerous, you know, they burn at four times the, um, four times the temperature as standard cars, which is true, but it is less likely that they will also crash and burn. So no need to worry about that. But th those sort of things do make up um a uh, sort of different package of insurance than um than a standard vehicle might um and there's also different types of uh, electric vehicles that are slightly more let's say futuristic than standard cars so there's things like um well i suppose teslas that extremely expect were at one point extremely expensive and sort of more prototype cars if you go back like maybe 10 years ago now that standard cars just were you know a, a, a normal risk price um, maybe that's something that Charlie probably knows more about is pricing risk but um, I'm not I'm not sure is there anything else that I haven't covered in there that someone can think yeah, of really, I think, um, but I suppose yeah to answer Carol, I was going to say yeah, when we used to price when the when the risks were priced because it's all new we don't have as much data on it um, so for example there was I think it was the Jaguars that were there was Jaguar 4x4 that we were seeing really expensive claims costs because the, if the battery got, if the, we thought there was a problem with the battery from a, an accident, the cost to investigate it could end up being the same cost as replacing the vehicle. So we had a couple of vehicles that were pretty much brand new and it, they had to be written off because the cost of replace, repairing them could ultimately cost a lot more than buying them. So obviously the price, pricing that risk has to factor that in, um, which is something that obviously with all the inflationary issues that we've had, I've seen across the market recently is something that's been really big across the insurance industry. Yeah, there's some really interesting facts about like um, ways electric cars have just sort of either gone really right or really wrong in terms of insurance as well. I've heard some stories, like Charlie said, of ones that have literally driven off the forecourt, gone over a bump, and that's the uh, battery gone, and that's sort of can put for your car. Um, but there's also, you know, there's the success stories about electric vehicles um, as well. So not to put anyone off their, their EVs.
brilliant thanks everyone is, is there any other questions or or um i think we've probably used up all our time well, conscious that we were being hosted by gti today um and target jobs um I think I think that just just says big thank you to everyone listening to us and thank you very much to the grass for joining to kind of talk through um, uh, experiences. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into us as a company, uh, the roles and that you can kind of do within insurance. Um, and if you are curious, want to find out more, please do reach out to us. Um, visit our website. Um, we are updating our website and we will have sort of ways you can contact us on our, on our website um, and more information about our various schemes, how to apply. Uh, processes, FAQs, uh, videos, um, and sort of day in the life of. But yeah, hopefully you found today useful. Um, and it's if you've not known about insurance, it's give you a little bit more of an insight, um, and maybe maybe put it as a an answer to the company you might consider applying to once you graduate uh, from your degree. So good luck, everyone on the call. Can't see who you are or what you're studying, but um, when your exams might be good luck uh, in your future careers, and uh, hopefully maybe I'll pass across further down the line. Yeah, as Jules said, thank you very much for uh, joining and thank you to our guest speakers uh, from Allianz. So um, just want to say quickly, we run webinars uh, really regularly on loads of different subjects. And next week we have two uh, tech themed webinars on getting into tech without a tech degree and how to get a graduate job in IT. So if that's of interest to you, please head to the Target Jobs page and sign up in the events section. Uh, thank you all again for coming and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cheers, guys. Thank Thanks, Jules. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, everyone. Thank you very much.